Justin here today we are checking out the beautiful Eddie Vedder song Longing to Belong fantastic ukulele album that he did it's just if you haven't checked it out it's really superb uh, record you know not not a comedy uke record it's really beautiful songwriting at least I think anyway so uh, there's quite a few things going on in this tune different rhythms some little lead lines some very interesting chords and stuff so uh, let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it so let's start off by running through the chords and keeping the rhythm real simple. First chord that we need is a C major 7 chord, so just 2nd finger, 2nd fret, string 1. Then we're going to an F add 9, and for that chord we just need 1st finger, 1st fret, string 2. That's the two chords that we need for the intro. And the beginning of the verse, C major 7. I'm falling, F add 9. C major 7 fell B F at 9 C major 7 falling F at 9 while hoping C major 7 to F at 9 Now we go to a D minor That's 2nd fret, 2nd fret, 1st fret open D minor cause all my a7 and A7 we just need 1st finger, 1st fret, string 3 Time is spent here F, 2nd open, 1st open Longing to be G7, open, 2nd, 1st, 2nd Long to you And then back to C major 7 To F at 9 Let's play that, add the rhythm in actually now as well. So the rhythm, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, are just all down strokes. I think on the record actually I can hear one doing that while the other one's doing this. I can't be certain, but it's a good idea to get into this uh, 16th note strum it's called when you strum one and two and three and four. Later on, we're going to need to add the up strums in as well. So, get, I'd get it. Recommend getting into the habit of this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Don't know if you can hear the accent as well. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And I'm exaggerating it now. But you want to get into doing those slightly harder hits on one and two and three and four. One. I'm falling, F at 9, and I, C major 7, fell B, F at 9, C major 7, I'm falling, F at 9, while hoping, C major 7 in your F at 9, D minor, cause all my A7 is spent here, F to B, G7, to C. Now 
I hear that the, the strumming picks up a little bit. The easiest thing will be to listen to the record because it is changing quite a lot. Uh, you know, to try and teach it exactly every strumming pattern on the whole tune would be kind of uh, take quite a while and be kind of difficult. So. kind of have to use your ears a bit on that one because actually to tell the truth as well I don't exactly remember the strumming pattern that happens at that particular point there's the honest little bit of honesty for you it doesn't go astray right then we've got this cool little instrumental section which as best I remember it is this have changed it up just a tiny bit it's definitely based around that so this is C major 7 and then we're just moving from 3rd fret 5th fret 7th fret and then we go to the F add 9 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 that's the pattern It's very hard for me to tell exactly what the strumming is on the record because there's more than one part there. So easiest thing is if you start with this. You just think one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then start to add in some of those up strums as you're feeling it. You know, that's probably the best way to go. So moving into verse 2, C major 7, going to F at 9, perfect. C major 7 within your F at 9. C major 7 hearts a F at 9, that C major 7 you'd replace F at 9. Now at this point you want to change the finger for the F add 9 from using your first finger to using your second finger. The reason is because we're about to start doing a little um, kind of chromatic movement of F to F sharp. So we've moved that second finger up one fret and then we've used the first finger as a bar at the first fret. And then we move that whole shape up one more fret to G add 9. So F and all the F sharp is G in F. And put your F sharp my F sharp to G F and then your F to G to C. So let's go through that verse two one more time. C major seven, dream of F at nine, perfect. C major seven within your F at nine. C major 7 hearts an F at 9 That C major 7 you'd be an F at 9 Change fingers, F at 9 And though the F sharp is G F You can't put your F sharp to G Back to F Love can be F sharp to G When you C major 7 to F at 9 C major 7 again to F add 9. Now the third verse, D minor. And when the A7 is right, I F that you'll be G. Okay, and we've got this little riff now. So it's D minor for a bar to A7. We've already done these chords already. To F. To G7, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and. Okay, so this is little finger going down the third fret of string 1. Flick it off to where the third finger is already placed. 
pluck the second string, pluck the third string, notes individually. One, two, three, and four, and. And then we're doing the same pattern again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Time just hangs on the G7 long to you. For those of you that haven't checked it out yet, you definitely should go and have a listen to Eddie Vedder's album. It's simply called Ukulele Songs. It's got loads of beautiful ukulele playing on it that you should definitely be checking out. He does some really quite tasty little chord movements and stuff. There's a lot to learn in, on, on that record. Uh, this song was obviously kind of complicated one, and you're going to have to do some listening to it, because for me to go through every little minute detail of it would take ages and be kind of painful for me and painful for you to learn. I think I've given you the bones of it, so listening to the original recording you should be able to kind of flesh it out and play it exactly like the record if that's what you want to do or, or just use what I've given you and make up your own version to sing and play as well. Uh, I should also apologise for uh, dodgy vocal in this song because it's uh, copying Eddie Vedder's vocal is a very difficult thing I think for most people, particularly for people like me that don't really sing much. Um, so uh, apologies for that just on the off chance that Eddie ever watched it one day. Um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll catch up with you for plenty more songs and stuff very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye bye.